Michael Horrigan, uh, one of the local trainers uh, to the Mr. Binman uh, Christmas Racing Festival uh, at Limerick. And if you were to describe what this festival means to you and what it means to people in the locality, how would you describe it, Mike? Well, sure, I suppose Leprechaun has Dublin mm. and Limerick has Limerick, race course, and it's you, you'll have a huge crowd there on, on Stevens' Day. Not as big the day after, not as big the day after, not as big the day after, but everybody seems to go racing on Stevenson's Day. You know, you'll have a huge crowd there Stevenson's Day, and there's good sponsorship, and there's, I mean, they, they do a good job in Limerick, and the ground, the ground is always pretty satisfactory most of the year mm. round. Even this time of the year, like you have the rain and you have the frost, but through the summer, they do a good job on that track, you know. There's something special about a local winner as well, and you were champion trainer at Limerick how many times? I don't know how many times I was. Quite a few. Quite a few, like. You, you were telling us a story one particular Christmas, you were a few, few points behind and you had to narrow the gap. Then narrow the gap and try and win the championship. It was a thousand pounds at the time, you know. But that, that year that we're talking about was 1990, and I said to the kids that if I won the championship in Limerick this year, that we would have won hundreds. If we went to send the funds of that. How did that go? Oh, the biggest disaster of all that we ever had, but sure. We in January were there for a fall, that like. But it's funny, if you think of Santa Ponza, it's a cold morning here this morning. I'd say if you had a choice of Santa Ponza or here on a cold, wet morning, it's one place you'd be. I'd be here. Mm. You, how long are you here? We bought this place in 1985. It was a greenfield site. Mm. And and I did. And we're here. We're here, I suppose. We moved into that old house below there in 85, November 85. We did, and we had 12 great years in it. We had. You've said, I think you said you'd never really worked a day in your life because training, it's just a way of life, I suppose. It's just a way, of, I mean, I'm doing it since I went to Charlie Wells, the 17th of August, 1962. And it's just something I do every day and what I get up to do. So you're, you're 60 years since you started off, more or less, with Charlie Wells. Yeah, I, was, I went to the, I went to the Coral sixty years ago last August. Where did you go from there? Uh, I've left my way into a job in Scotland, into Will Crawford, to replace uh, a champion jockey, Ron Valley. Mm. I'm afraid it didn't last. Understandably. <laughs> yeah. And when you took out your license, did you envisage it would go as it went? Were you are you happy with your career so far? And I guess you're still hoping that another good horse will come along. Yeah, and I mean I had those good horses, and they kind of I won't say they flew over my head. But we, we didn't appreciate what we mm. had. Everyone says that, or a lot of people say I didn't appreciate it at the time. I never appreciated that, you know. And if I could get it now. If you I would get, appreciate it. If I could get one now, I'd milk it as best I could. Mm. Like, I mean, all we were doing that time was trying to make ends meet. I mean, the bank looking for money and, you know, and you, you, you were just too busy thinking mm. of the other things that, were, that could go wrong. Specifically Doran's Pride and, and B for Sam. Before we talk about them, you put a swimming pool in here when you barely had a house. In and it wasn't a swimming pool for bikinis either. No, no, no. Hey, it was the year Johnny Kevlin was with me and I sold the horse to Michael Buckley. And Nick Anderson was looking for a claimer and I left Johnny go at the same time. Mm. And now if you ask me before today, when was that? That was 1991. Mm. Because Johnny came, was here last summer, 12 months. And he came to see us for a while. And um, I just said, what years ago? Did to the games in 1991. 30 year anniversary. So, yeah. So, like, I mean. And you got a swimming pool in? I built a swimming pool that time with the horse I sold. Mm. And so sure, we said we'd spend X amount and sure, we spent a bit more than the horse I paid, mm. <laughs> which put me in trouble again. Mm. And like, after I sold the house, my friendly bank manager, Jerry O'Connell, said to me, he said, You'll never see a poor day again, he said. Mm. So I blew the whole lot. <laughs> I blew it on four and a half thousand pounds more. So not as long as I was at it, I was four and a half thousand more in debt. Mm. B for Sam didn't cost much more than four and a half grand. What, what attracted you to him when you first saw him? That, I suppose that's one of my first memories of racing. He had just come around taking on best mate at that time. That was his stable there. Mm. Um, 
he was he was very athletic. Everything about him was, you know, he was just he was a showman. He he was like a couple of horses that you saw there today. Like he just athletic, very athletic, and had a great mindset for the game as well. You know, I mean, he, he his mind was always on his job. He, he was never thinking of not doing it. Mm. You know, Don's fight was the same. Like he he was an iron horse. Like you know, I mean, he he passed the winning post in front. 35 times. Mm. He won 29 and the race cost proper. And it's incredible to think the role that Beaver Salmon played in Timmy Murphy's renaissance as a rider also. Oh yeah, I mean, Timmy was lucky, Timmy was lucky to find the horse. He, 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 after he spent his time in prison, he came here to recuperate after that. And he, 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 he actually rang, he got his agent, Chris Broad, to ring us to know could he come here. Like, uh, I was very proud of, of him saying that mm. at the time, and that he wanted to come here. He didn't want to go anywhere else. Like, mm. and so, you think back, if we said no, where might he have ended up? Where, where might he have ended up? Maybe retirement. Yeah, maybe back where he came mm. from. But he, he, he didn't. I got him to ride on this horse. Be for salmon. Should be for salmon. Made him like you know. I mean. Made both of us. And you remember Andrew McNamara, the unbelievable day in the Lex and all that, but yeah. they, you're looking for good horses, uh, you know, what, you're 75 this year, is it? Tomorrow. 75 tomorrow. So by the time you watch this, hopefully you've wished him a happy birthday. <laughs> but the good horse can still come along. Kevin Prendergast good horse, got good horse in his late you 80s. Don't know. You, you don't, don't know. You don't know where And you have a couple come. of, JP has a couple of nice horses here. You have Sanibel Island, who's been doing well, but yeah. you, you you will have a few nice ones yeah. to Limerick over the Christmas as well. I will, yeah. And mm. like, I have a few horses that have needly injuries at the moment, and hopefully they'll be back as well. You mm. know what I mean? It, it's, it's really what keeps you going. Mm. Um, it's easy to come down here in the morning. Very easy to get out of bed at half or six or five o'clock and mm. whatever. Come down here. You'll never really retire, will you? What would I do? This? What would I do? What would I do? Like, I mean, I don't know what I could. What could I do? I don't play golf. I go for a swim. I don't go to the pub anymore. No, you give that up as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, what, what, what would you do? Like, I just mm. love what I do. Mm. How many horses have you now? Twenty now. I think. Mm. It's a nice number. It's a nice number, like. In, Three staff and it's easy to do it. And if they didn't turn, somebody didn't turn up, you won't be under pressure. And if it does turn up, you can be finished here most mornings half eleven. And I know you're, um, you know, you wouldn't have obviously the string of yesteryear, but you would love a winner at Limerick at Christmas. I feel. And there's no question about it. I'd love a winner anywhere. Mm. You know, but I mean, uh, Limerick is special. Like you know, I mean, when you train your first winner at Limerick, you'd like. Who is that? Oh, Ram Raja. Yeah, she belongs to Robert Hawkins. And, but, uh, like, uh, 79, it was, it was wonderful. Mm. Like, I mean, you, you wait so long and I was about to give it up. You were six years before you the winner? Yeah. And this was the wake or break nearly, was it? Well, it was, it was, uh, fuck it, it was time, time to think of doing something mm. else. So we had nothing. And it was after being married. And we had nothing. My wife was working. And she was the bread bringer, mm. and I was spending it, mm. you know. And, but then it happened, and we got there eventually. And Paul has been riding, obviously, and Michael's training, Laura's training now yeah, as well. Yeah. We don't know what Mark's going to do, but they've done all right. Yeah, we sure look good. They've all done well for themselves, mm. you know, and they're they're healthy, mm. which is great, you know. Will many of them be around for the Mr. Binman Limerick Christmas Racing Festival? Oh, let's say. Paul, um, I don't know, it's, yeah, I think Paul is coming just after it. Paul is always low on himself. Yeah, well, he's two children now, mm. so, so. Quieting him down a bit. Just yeah. him down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard, that is wonderful. It's great to have them all around, you know. Mm. I mean, Kay's children are, are flying on the mm. ponies, and Michael's ch two children are flying on the ponies. The cycle continues. The cycle continues. Mm. Michael's, the, the eldest granddaughter comes and rides out once or twice a week. She comes there before she goes to college in the morning. She comes, pulls in there at seven o'clock to mm. ride out, which is, you want interest to do that, don't you? Love. Yeah, you mm. want to love to do it, yeah. Mm. yeah. But sure, it is wonderful that they're all around them. And as I said, Kay's children are flying in the ponies, you know, going hunting now on the weekend. And they were out schooling over banks the other day with their father and their mother and so on. 
Never get through. And any prospective owner, you still have a couple of stables. Ah, you're always looking for somebody. You know, which you need a man now with money. You need a person that'll pay that way, and you know. But I mean, you don't want to hassle years ago. I mm. wouldn't want that hassle. Mm. I mean, when you have a hundred houses, you probably have ten fellas paying you every month, mm. and you have fifty fellas not paying mm. you. Do you know, and the, the ten were carrying the can, mm. and yourself. You know, but it's a lot easier this way. I mean, I, I could never make money when I had 30 people working for me. 30 mortalities every year with wages. You know, it, it wasn't easy. Mm. It wasn't easy. And then, you'd have, you might be getting paid for some of the houses. And, you know, you were funny and you, you were hanging on to them and hanging on to them and the hope mm. they might be good. The owner would never get good. But I've got. Very good owners now. Long may continue. Yeah, well, that's what it's all about now, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't like the other fellow now. Mm. You know, I mean, if, why would you? Mm. With staff problems now and everything else, and wages and everything else. Like, I mean, as the fellow said, when they had the Maguires and all those, they, they were all working for small money. Uh, and the dream of being jockeys as well, you see, was, and sure, we, we had great jockeys here. L Limerick is obviously special to Michael Horrigan as well. You remember almost to the... So the second of the day, your first winner. Did you ever have a freeze at top, top of your head? Mm. I, I will never forget it. Up on the stands, the lower stand in the old Limerick, and Ramraja won. You know he was going to win, going to the last. And my head just freeze the top of my head. And I, it was 1979, St. Patrick's Day, 17th of March, 10 past two. I will never, ever, ever forget it. And you don't forget to. Is it relief? Well, not relief. The fact that I trained the winner. Mm. Can't put words in that feeling. Uh, no, no, mm. cannot put words in that feeling. I, I had it twice, three times, when I won with the Glen Livers in, in Liverpool with Tropical Lake. Same thing happened to me. And when Dorms fired, won in Cheltenham. Mm. You know, I mean, it, it has never again happened. Even the beef? Not the same as mm. not, not the same as that, you know. Mm. I mean, th th that was a different thing. That, uh, I can't mm. explain it. Mm. it. Just the top of your head just goes mm. so cold and numb. And you you don't believe it's happening, like right? to to do it at your local track as well. And like this year now, with they will say the Guinness Fahey novice chase, the quality of horses that go to Limerick, that and also that race might suit a horse that can't go to Leopardstown. It's over an intermediate trip. You've all the novice races as well. Well, you had no one going to you had no one no one from this area will go to Leopardstown. There was no house like those houses around to go to Leopardstown. Mm. Uh, like I have no house to go to Leopardstown at the minute for the, for this meeting. Mm. And like uh, I spent fifteen or sixteen years going. Every Christmas, mm. it was only a case of going up to collect the, whatever big race there was because they had the horses to do it. Mm. Uh, like, I had only two horses, like, they were careful of the road, yes. But, like, uh, we went to Leopardstown one year and I think I had a triple. Like, uh, bless my sister won, Doran's Pride won, and Mr. Sneaky Boo won. You will have runners for Limerick, though. Oh, I will have runners in Limerick, mm. but I'm not good enough to go to Leopardstown. Mm. But, but Limerick is this, a pity Limerick isn't like it is now. Like you've a great, it's a great one track now. Mm. You've a great one race. You there. would have had more runners here down the years. You, yeah. you would have been targeting mm. Limerick more because it would have, it would have been closer and easier to win, maybe. Mm. You know, and you you would be going to you could go to Dublin for the Hennessy, and you could go for the bigger ones mm. later on, but you could. Like a hundred grand in your doorstep if you had a house. Well, it's marvelous for the track as well that Faheen put his name on the race, winning at 11, going on 12 as a novice. Yeah, yeah, mm. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and like, uh, you know, I mean, and it's a good track, like, I mean, it is a, it's a very fair track. Like, mm. I mean, uh, an ordinary house doesn't win a good race there mm. because it, it, people think, thought at first when the track was open, it was an easy track. If you got to the top of the hill, you floated home. Mm, not so. Not so. Mm. You walk down the track and stand at the four long hours. I'm not tall, you're not tall. You can only see the winning post. Mm. You know, just, just that gradual climb away from you. 
you know, and like it, it does change a lot from the last to the line. Your head mightn't freeze now if you have a winner this year, but there'll be a great old buzz. Well, no, you. but it, it, we won from the final. Mm. You know, like, any winner is great now. And you were surrounded by family and all that and people you know as well. Yeah, and, uh, and, the, and the grandchildren will be there. Mm. Like, you know, things change when you, mm. get, when you get younger. <laughs>